Well, hi there. I'm Carol Lutzinger, and you're tuned in to Science Stuff. We're going to continue talking about science project investigations because they're so much fun and there's so many opportunities to experiment at home when you get home if you ask your parents permission. So we're going to use our senses. Now, you've, you're, if you've been to school, you know that you learned about hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, touching. There's other properties that things have, like are they magnetic or not? Are they smooth or rough? Um, are they transparent or translucent? And there's so many things. But I have three liquids here, and they're all transparent. Um, and some you might want to, to uh, use for one purpose or another. So we're going to try to figure out what happens when you have these three liquids that are transparent and what properties they have if I can get the bottle open. There we go. So since this is a real science investigation, I want to be sure that I am measuring. So I'm using my home measuring cup. Your teachers probably have measuring utensils like beakers and graduated cylinders. Um, I'm using my home measuring cup. So I'm putting a third of a cup of liquid in each cup. And let's see if I got it right. Let's see. Cup one is this one. So there's that liquid. Now this liquid is going in cup two. And you'll notice that I'm using different cups because I don't want to mix one transparent liquid with another because that will change the results. Another one third of a cup. And one more one. These, these don't look exactly the same, but they all measure exactly the same. They all say one third cup. And this is the last one. Hmm. Hmm. And this is one of those lids that, uh, let's see, you have to push down on. Yeah. That's so you don't get hurt. Uh, oop, made a mess. Of course, made a mess. Call hazmat. When you're working with science, you need to be sure you're not making a mess. And one third of a cup. All right, and I'm going to put the lid back on because I don't want to spill it and make a mess. To do, to do this activity, I've got a data sheet. Now this one happens to be filled out already. <laughs> so that's kind of not fair. But a data sheet, you have to say what you're testing and what the results are and how many times you checked it. So on this one, I've got cup one, two, and three. And what do I see? Do I see uh, a light? Do I see the light? What happens when I swirl the cup around? When I add water, when I add salt? When I add food coloring, there's different things that whatever you're going to put that you're going to test, that's what would go at the top. But so let's find out if if light shines through cup number one. And let me get a clean sheet of paper here so you can see what happens. So yes, the light is shining through. Um, I'm looking from the top and I see three little lights in there, one on the bottom, one in the middle, and one at the top. So now that's, that's liquid one. Let's check liquid two and see if the light goes through. Yep, it does. You see the light flashing back and forth because the liquid is sloshing in the cup. That's cup two. Now we'll try cup three. Yep, the light goes through. So that would be a yes on all of those. Now the next thing is what's going to happen if we add water 
to each container. All right. So I have my water and we're going to add the water. Not that one. <laughs> I checked with my smeller on that one. That's an interesting thing about senses. It helps us discover if something is okay or not okay. So I'm going to add water to cup one. I'm going to add water to cup two. And I'm going to add water to cup three. And I'm going to observe what happened. And I see in cup three, I have lots of bubbles floating around on the top. And I saw big bubbles in it as I added the water. Hmm. Now I'm wondering why that happened. And that's what I'm wondering. That gives me some more questions to think about. So now let's see what happens if I add food coloring. Hmm. What do you think is going to happen? Remember, this would be a hypothesis. What do I think is going to happen when I add food coloring to these liquids? OK, so let's see. I'm going to add a few drops. Let's see what happens. And I'm going to record what I see in my notebook. I have my notebook and I'm going to write everything down because scientists have to keep their notes. So let's see what happens when I add it to the second one. Three drops. Now when I'm controlling is the variables, OK? I'm controlling how many I am putting in. Three drops in each one. One third of a cup of liquid in each one. And there's a difference between the first cup and the second cup. And that's what you would write down. You would write a description of it to explain what you see. So now let's see what happens when we put three drops in the last cup. <laughs> now that was a little bit strange, wasn't it? Now, what the, what the fun part of this is, you get to sit there and watch. We can't sit here and just watch for the program because you'd, you'd, you'd think, when is it ever going to stop? But when you're sitting at home and you're doing this yourself, or you're sitting in the classroom with your classmates and you're doing these kinds of experiments, you're going to be watching what's happening at everybody else's table as well as at your own table. And you're going to be saying, hey, yours is different from mine. Uh, there, that's the fun part of science. When, when you're working with other people and you see their results and you compare to your results, that gives you good, powerful information. This is why when, when a, for example, when we've been going through all of this vaccine business, before people get a vaccine, it's tested with, with the illnesses that we were having. It was in, really important to get the vaccine out. So all of us who have had the vaccine, we're part of the test group. Imagine that being part of a science test group, which is really cool when you think about it. Um, when I was a little girl, we could not go to school until we had had a smallpox vaccination. And all of us of my generation have a scar on our arm to show that we had our smallpox vaccination. <laughs> A vaccine is used to help your body create antibodies or against bodies. And testing is important. We're just testing one set here for our little experiment. But for, for you to know what's really going to happen, is it going to happen every time, you would repeat this test five times, repeating just what you did. One third a cup of the liquid, three drops of food coloring. You might uh, try adding uh, paint and see what happens if you add three drops of paint. That would be your 
spin on this science activity. This is how we learn. I, I've seen some beautiful art where people are pour, putting water in a, in, a, in a bucket and putting paint on top of it and sloshing paper in and bringing it out. And it comes out this beautiful art and people are selling them for a lot of money. You just never know what creative thing is going to come out of your brain as you're doing a science experiment. You'd never know. So I see that this one is totally separated. I have a layer of food coloring on the top and I have the clear liquid and then I have the blue liquid on the bottom. I wonder why. In this one everything is dispersed but there is a thin layer of the food coloring on the top and it's a little bit less here but I'm not sure if that's because the cup is tilted but I think there's a little thin layer on top. In this one it's all dispersed. This one is water. Water and water. This one, if you could smell it, you would say, oh, that stinks because this one is vinegar and water. And this one smells kind of like the baby, only not the baby's diaper. Um, this is baby oil and water. And which is on the top? Is it the water or is it the baby oil? Hmm. Interesting thing to think about. Could you figure it out? Now, another option that you could have would be what happens if I add sugar or salt or baking soda and a baking powder? It just, just you know, you want to try that? Okay, let's let's try that. Let's see what happens. Um, hmm. Somewhere I got a little spoon and I don't know what I did with it. So, what can I use? Uh, ha, ha. I will put this in here. Mrs. Lessinger is going to make a mess on the black tablecloth again. And I guess what we'll do is we're just going to pinch, you know, you pinch an inch because you don't want to put too much in there. So what do you think is going to happen when I put the baking soda in with the water? And there's my pinch. And here's with the water and the vinegar. Hmm, we're having a reaction here. And with the baby oil. So we got three different reactions in the three different mixtures. These are mixtures, they're solutions. Um, so here, we're still clear. Here, with the vinegar, we've got lots of bubbles. I hope you can see those bubbles. And they're popping up from the bottom, going to the top. But look what's happened in the baby oil. Some of it's falling suspended in the baby oil and just kind of sitting there not going anywhere so I hope this piques your curiosity and I hope that you say well I want to try a science fair project another fun project to do is Skittles um, you could eat the leftovers on that one if you use Skittles you see do they dissolve faster in cold water or hot water I, and I hope that you have fun doing science and I hope that you'll join us again for another episode of Science Stuff. Thanks for watching.